Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, today I really wanted to get back into Rome Total War. Uh, it's probably my favorite Total War game of all time except for Medieval, but Vanilla Rome Total War is, um, is definitely up there and perhaps even better. There's something really cool about this uh, time period. It's just a classic in every sense and ha has a lot of features that uh, the later games actually do not. Um, now, we're playing uh, Rome Total War Vanilla, meaning that uh, we're, we are playing it, it without any mods. Uh, and we are playing it as the Julii family, uh, as opposed to the Brutii or Scipii. This is, of course, highly ahistorical. Uh, the Roman um, Republic was not divided into simply these three families. But for gameplay purposes, it's not uh, it's not uh, too bad. Um, we will be playing on hard, uh, as opposed to medium or very hard, because I've uh, I've found that medium is a bit too easy, while very hard simply is uh, tedious. Um, so hard seems to be kind of the sweet spot here. Uh, as you can see, I am not uh, filming my face in this video, and that's because uh, OBS um, kind of interferes with uh, Rome. It is an old game, and that's, that is uh, probably why. Uh, so we are doing this through NVIDIA Shadow... Uh, <laughs> NVIDIA... NVIDIA Shadow Play. <laughs> that was hard to say. Uh, and uh, no advice, please. I do not want advice this time. Uh, or any time for that matter. So uh, let us uh, get right into it. Gods. I hate Gauls. My grandfather hated them too. Even before they put out his eyes. Did you think I'd be out here on the frontier without good reason? Yes. Rome needs a strong frontier. No! Rome doesn't need unwashed barbarians at her gates. So, that's why I'm here. The leader of the Julii, to bring Roman order to stinking Gauls. Revenge? That'd be good too. This war against the Gauls won't last long. And when it's done, I've got plans. This is all about power. Power in Rome. Going down that road means dealing with all my rivals. The Senate. The Greeks. Those Carthaginian elephant riders. The Scipii and the Brutii families, too. After all, the man who controls Rome rules the world. And one day, I will be emperor. Now that is one heck of an introduction video. Maybe the coolest one uh, Creative Assembly ever made. Uh, I think it is uh, better than the other, um, the other faction intros as well, at least for the Romans. So let's see here. Uh, the Senate in this game uh, are located in Rome. Um, the Senate basically controls Rome. Um, while the individual families are um, either in Sicily or Capua or in south southeastern uh, uh, Italy here, while we are in the north. So Rome is kind of off limits as of right now. Um, and it all depends on the Senate uh, power and the um, how much the people likes us, because later on in the game, uh, depending on how well we do uh, and how high our public order is and such, uh, we will be able to eventually declare war, uh, or civil war f for that matter, on the Senate and the other Roman families. Uh, and that's kind of the end game challenge of this, uh, when you become powerful, like a powerful Roman faction. Uh, but for now the Senate gives us uh, missions. Uh, and for this first one, we need to take Segesta. Now, now this is a classic mission. <clears throat> it is something uh, probably every Julii uh, uh, faction player does their first round. Uh, now we have cities. We have two cities. Uh, as we can see, they're kind of not making that much money right now. And we have two, three, four uh, leaders. We have uh, our faction leader, Flavius Julius. Uh, Vibius Julius, 
Lucius Julius and uh, Quintus Julius. Uh, they're all Julius because we are the Julii family. Um, it is important to have uh, f uh, family members as governors because they often add certain modifiers to the city. So for example, um, this guy this uh, gets one plus one uh, sorry plus one management um, which I guess is actually kind of a command skill but in management um, he is pretty pretty horrible so for a city uh, governor he's he's not that well so let's look at the other one uh, Lucy Julius is a great uh, manager uh, our faction leader is also quite well. He is uh, a, a good commander as well, or at, at least a decent. This is out of 10 after all. So having four is uh, simply um, decent. As it says, this man's limited administrative talent produces results that are adequate, but far from inspired. Uh, and this man has a basic talent for command, although he sometimes lacks confidence. So it's like a decent, but not good sure. skill. This guy is better at management, uh, so uh, Vibius is better than Quintus, so we should probably exchange these two. Quintus seems to be a better commander as well. So let's put him with uh, Vibius and Vibius in Ariminium. So let's see, this goes, go from 232 to 138. So we actually made uh, 100 gold pieces there, or uh, denarii, let's call it. That is our currency after all. Now we should take uh, Suggesta on our first term to, to gain that... Um, to gain the Senate mission thing. Um, I mean, uh, yeah. And we will be greatly rewarded, it says. We have a spy here, we can move that around. We probably want to expand up in Gaul, uh, Cisalpine uh, Gaul uh, first, I believe um, the term was. Um, but let's do build some buildings first in Aredium. We would do well to probably uh, construct a trader uh, to get some trade going. We can see how our city does by going to the settlement details. Um, and right now, as we can see, our income is minus 45. Building a trader uh, would increase the admin income and the trade income from a 215 to 236 and 190 to 193. So that's, it's not that much yet, but uh, it also adds population growth, which uh, gives us a more uh, taxable population. The same for here. We actually, uh, ports are extremely important uh, because they do give a lot of uh, trade bonuses. Um, um, so that's something we should probably create first. And it's, it's, and it'll take two turns to build, and the same for the trader. Uh, our diplomats. I assume we do not want to have, um, trade with the Gauls, because we want to destroy them. Uh, so let's send this guy to Greece, perhaps, uh, or something like that. Because we won't attack the Greeks, uh, before a long, uh, a long while. Now, Suggesta has a uh, two-unit garrison. That's not a lot. We have uh, three units here. We could combine these and completely destroy them. And um, that's perhaps what we will do, uh, giving both of these guys experience. So let's try to do that. That means that our faction leader becomes the um, commander here. Which, is, which, which I certainly am okay with. Now, your army can also construct watchtowers and forts, and watchtowers lets you see more of your region, um, and, the f and forts lets you erect forts on, um, well, kind of wherever you want to, but uh, it's possible to do it on strategic locations, such as behind uh, uh, a, a river, uh, meaning that an enemy cannot cross that river. So if we created two forts here and here, um, an enemy Gallic um, army would not be able to attack us without first sieging that fort. So that's something to keep in mind. Now let's siege Segesta. And since uh, Segesta is a village lacking walls, we can simply attack it right away. So that's something we are going to do. Gotta love this soundtrack. 
And um, let's fight it on the battle map. I always love uh, fighting the Suggest the Battle, the first one uh, on the battle map itself. A dead enemy always smells good. Over there stand the rebel slaves. <laughs> they are braver and more worthy than men of their type have any right to be. By this time tomorrow, our sword arms will ache from overuse! One of the absolute best things about Rome Total War and also medieval but i guess it began in rome kind of uh is the general speech uh or speeches they're just so lively and unique um and vary from character to character enemy to enemy and so on it's really something that is lacking in in every title since uh, med medieval 2 which is a shame so I think uh, this uh, will be our sort of general um, lineup here. As, uh, range units in the front, so that we can hit them as soon as possible. Um, yes, let's do this. Oh, let's see. Remember back on my old uh, computer back in uh, 2005 or whatever when I first played this game. Um, could nowhere near <laughs> uh, handle this many troops um, and especially at this uh, graphical level. Um, it was just such a good looking game for its time. Uh, and, um, and I was coming from games such as... Um, uh, uh, such as Battle for Middle Earth and uh, Empire Total, no, sorry, <laughs> Empire at War. Uh, Star, so Lord of the Rings and Star Wars, and they were more, more like classic uh, uh, real-time strategy games with uh, sort of units that did not match real life. While Total War really tried to do that with hundreds and even thousands of units uh, on the screen at the same time. Uh, so that was something, something new and uh, really cool. Um, okay, so let's put our troops in the front. Uh, our Hastati units actually have uh, pilas, which are spears, so they can th throw them at the enemy as well uh, whenever we wish to. Now this enemy is pretty um, pretty weak, so we should be able to uh, destroy them uh, fairly fast. Let's remove the um, skirmish mode right now. I'll uh, I would rather manage that myself so let's see do you are you in range you are in range and you need to get closer let's see here we're getting ready and sprays away now run run my dudes And now we're... Ah, okay. I ran too late. But our Hastati are getting ready with their pilas. Which are basically spears. Let's see here. Will you throw? Will you pledge to throw? And they are. <laughs> the enemy general flees. Press forward so the spirit of his army is broken too. There's also something so special about the announcers in this game. They're just so um, into it, it seems. Um, and I absolutely love it. Now these are spearmen, so having my general uh, plunge into their unit is uh, very unwise. Uh, but from behind I am going to see if I can uh, deal some damage. The gods who fill the heart of the enemy general with fear. Now he flees the field like a 
coward. And the uh, we won. Show their true virtue. They are... This is a heroic victory worthy of Roman arms. Ah, oh, yes, I love his uh, enthusiasm. <laughs> Okay, so when you capture a settlement, you have the choice of uh, occupying it, enslaving it, or exterminating the population. Um, occupying uh, gives us some loot, 50. Uh, enslaving um, gives us uh, the same amount of loot, but gives us also loot from slaves and puts slaves in our cities. Exterminating gives us a lot of loot, but also destroys the population. Um... Actually, enslavement might take some population away as well. But let's 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 use enslave. The kind of weird thing is that simply occupying a city, if I'm correct here, um, and and uh, this might be from the medieval uh, uh, game, but I I think it's the same here. Simply occupying a city will actually lower or um, not improve the um, the uh, public order that much. So the smart thing is either to uh, enslave or um, exterminate often, um, at least uh, f like for public order's sake. So let's see, we got a retinue, body slave. Great men have better things to do than dress themselves and clean their own armor. Plus one influence and minus one from personal security. Increases the chance of being assassinated. Flavius Julius is our leader. So we got one more influence. More often than not, this man's counsel is listened to with respect, even if it does not always carry the day. Um, so this was the body slave one. Let's see here. Where is that? Yeah, it's, so that's here. And I believe uh, retinues can be given to other people as well, be because they kind of, as you see, act as as people. So they they're kind of his his uh, followers, while traits are inherent in. Um, in the individual characters. We completed the mission and have received a gift of 5,000 denarii, meaning we, had, we now have 8,000. Uh, Flavius Julius got another one, uh, turn called slave, plus one command when fighting against rebels. Um, let's see here, but did, did you have four command before as well? That's strange. Either way, we took Sagesta. Um, so that's perfect. We're, bu we're building a governor's house. And with that, I do believe we will end our turn. So the Gauls want trade rights. Um, we will make money on this. But um, I do not know if it is the wisest thing to do right now. I believe I will say no, because we do want to attack them. At least later on, um, but fairly soon. We can recruit another general. Uh, he's pretty, pretty trash. Plus two command, plus two command, minus two morale. Uh, no. Senate mission. Take settlement. Narbo marches. Games will be thrown in your honor at the Senate's expense. Yes, yeah, so the Senate wants us to take a uh, Gallic uh, town. So it was pretty good that we didn't sign that trade agreement. So because this army now was there, our our uh, poor diplomat was not able to simply cross the, the river. Uh, we will, I think, use our spy to see if the Gauls have any more armies here uh, and now our city is made or our town is uh, is, is improved with a governor's house uh, we have a slave resource here it, and it is exhausted after 19 turns let's see what this does um, slavery zero per so that means population growth uh, okay I think the first thing, thing we will do is uh, build roads, although walls are also uh, pretty tempting, but roads help our economy and uh, lets us travel uh, longer f each turn. Perfect, Senate mission, 
And construction complete of the governor's house. Excellent. Let's see, we're starting to make some money here. And uh, once this become becomes finished, we're gonna we're gonna party. Let's see. Now I think he is just such a bad manager. Um And uh, Flavius Julius is quite a good one, so I think he actually gives the city a lot of money. But, um, so taking him out, loses 488. Leaving it vulnerable to this army if we attack the army standing at the river. Uh, I think we'll keep them in the, in the city for the next turn, actually. And we can use our fleet to scout ahead as well. That's a fishing village, a rebel fishing village, meaning that there's probably a city somewhere here. And the Gauls are closing in. We have a rebel army outside of uh, Aretium. We have a new family member. And a lot of buildings are completed. So let's see, we have a um, family tree actually, which is super awesome. Um, our faction leader is up here. And our faction heir is down here. Now, uh, these family members also get their own uh, offspring. <laughs> and uh, we are actually able to choose our own faction heir by clicking on the different um, male characters. This was obviously a time when uh, only male were, males were uh, able to hold uh, office. Um, and by clicking here, so set set faction heir. We do want them want the best character to be the faction heir, though. And at this time, Lucius Julius is clearly the best uh, alternative. Senate offices list. So depending on the different characters, uh, your character may become or may get a senate office as well. Right now, uh, the senate itself holds a lot of these offices, but the Scipii uh, family holds the questor. Um, uh, office uh, with the Cornelius Scipio, which is, I believe, their faction leader. Yes. So let's see. This is such a cool uh, sort of UI thing uh, where you you can kind of see Senate uh, the liberations happening, uh, their policies towards individual factions, depending on who uh, the Roman factions are at war with. Um, so let's see, for Gaul, for example, the Senate has, after due deliberation, decided that these people are not to be considered friends of Rome. Their claims to territory, freedom, and independence should be disputed at every conceivable opportunity. These people can be absorbed into the Empire by occupying their cities and imposing good Roman culture in place of their foul and, and inferior ways. By, bring, by bringing them our goods, sorry, our gods, our laws, and our just administration, their towns will become fine examples of our great Roman civilization. But for Thrace, for example, uh, the senators note with approval that war with these people is currently far from your thoughts. However, they wish to impress upon you that, in the interest of the Senate and people of Rome, friendly diplomatic relations should be established. Uh, but with the Greeks, uh, which I believe the Brutii are at war with... No, the Scipii are, are at war with them. Um, the Senate is also at war with them and uh, wants them to be... Um, Conquered, and that's because the Scipii attacked Syracuse in Sicily. That's a pretty great city to have. Um, so that's how that works. Let's see here. Yes, we probably want to keep this guy here so that we know what's going on there. This Gaul uh, Gallic army will not be able to reach Sagesta if we move our troops out. And we will build a wall this turn to um, to force them to siege us if they were to attack us. Um, I'll keep the Velites in the city. So that it can't just be taken over by some random army. And I will meet the Gallic army uh, in the field, at least block their passage there. Now we do have this rebel army here. We, we do want to um, destroy that one. Uh, I think... Having a shrine uh, is uh, is what we should do next, uh, and we will choose carefully. I think Jupiter. So I'm not I'm not uh, a a pro expert here. I'm just an an experienced guy wanting to have fun. I do know most of what is going on in the total war war world, but I'm not one to 
go extreme uh, min max. So I am just going to pick what feels right and what I do believe is the best uh, option without looking at every conceivable um, possibility uh, of uh, cheesing the game. So I think it fits to have a shrine of Jupiter in our capital. Uh, giving us 5% happiness and 5% uh, more law. Uh, because law gives us public order as well. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Um, another thing that ha that influences um, city growth is um, tax rate. So, for example, if I put this down to low we have, get more public order and an increased population growth, but we get we lose tax uh, taxes, tax income, uh, and, and the same for high and very high. But I think I'll keep it on normal for now. That seems like the uh, good thing to do. In um, aluminium, I think uh, establishing a trader uh, would be good. We are still in the, in the red when it comes to uh, making money. So I want to get that. Noble Max. Uh, finished. Our port is ready. Beautiful. We have trade with um, with the um, Brutii family here. At least that's what I believe we should have. Let's see. We have trade. Um, I do not. I don't think it says exactly where we trade though. But show trade summary. And uh, yes, so we do trade with Patavium, Aretium, Rome, and Tarentum. So that's a Brutia, and we have sea exports all the way to Syracuse, uh, the city being sieged. So I don't know if, if that money is being made now since the, I guess the port isn't blockaded, but the city is. So yeah, interesting anyway, having ports uh, generate a lot of income and possibilities for, uh, for your faction. Lost some profits there. Let's see. A shrine and a wooden palace. Say. So as you, as you can see, we have now walls around our city. So the House of Brutii declared war on the Greek city-states, taking Apollonia. Uh, they're, doing, they're actually doing it quite, quite fast uh, this time, the Scipia and the Brutii. Um, so that's, uh, I think that's going to be a good challenge uh, much later on. Um, our temple is built. We shall now build um, communal farming, I think, because improved farms and food production sounds like a good thing. Although the Temple of Jupiter uh, does sound d d does look tasty, but let's build farms. Rome requires food, and in Segesta, I will build a temple just to um, completely secure the uh, happiness level let's see here now do we attack the gauls right away or the rebels i do not believe rebels will siege cities they're only um i think though that they bring public disorder to the city or do they okay squalor law buildings of entertainment no i, I don't think they do Um, they do not, but they do, they, it is annoying having a, uh, rebel army there. So, so we will remove them later, but I think for now we should, um, really get rid of this Gallic army here. We will reinforce this, uh, army with some troops. They are not that many, but they do have horses. I think this will some, this will be something. We can manage, especially with this uh, army here. I will, I will save the game, just um, just in case uh, the game crashes. Uh, but I will not be loading any time during this campaign, so uh, it is uh, all or nothing. Let's see here, uh, Massilia. Okay, perfect. Now let's attack the Gauls. Gallic family member of uh, Lugotorix. We have more command, uh, as you can see with by the by the stars here. So let's go. We will attack the neutral faction and declare war on the Gauls. Ouch! And uh, the Gauls decide to retreat. 
Um, but we can attack them still. Because they are within our range of movement. And I was wrong, we cannot attack them still. They were just barely out of range. Uh, that sucks, so we will see where they move next turn. Um, the fact that we are at war with the Greeks means that we probably shouldn't have trade with them, because I do not believe the Senate will like that. Let's see here. The Senate likes the Brutii the most. Uh, we are equal in standing in the Senate. Uh, and they want us to take Narbo Martius. It will probably improve both of our things here. Anyway, let's see what happens. Let's see where this war takes us. Now we are under siege by the rebel army, which I specifically said would not besiege us. Now, being besieged obviously removes some income uh, because we cannot trade. Um, and it will deplete our uh, manpower too, I believe. Uh, or perhaps not. But if we allow the rebel forces to besiege our city for seven turns, they take the city automatically unless we sally forth before. So, right now, I could place my army right outside here. We could try to attack this army though. Um, this is actually very hard. They have these two armies here now. Uh, but I think because the... The uh, Gallic army will need to siege us, which will uh, require one turn. We will, uh, in fact, go back and um, attack this rebel army here. Which now runs away, and uh, we can't attack them again. But we will try to make some troops here. And I think we will make a barracks here too, just to be safe. And in Ariminium, uh, we will um, make a shrine as well to, I believe, growth. Growth is important. Town watch, one more. Your honor. Let's see, who can we meet? Your honor. Your honor. Your honor. I like this guy. Let's see, who's sieging the city? So the Gauls are sieging Massilia. They have a much weaker army. I do not believe they will be able to do that. To take the city by themselves. So let's see what happens now. This is exciting. Okay, so the Gauls did not siege us anywhere. We have a new family member, Aurelia. We built our shrine and we have recruited some units. So now we will get rid of this uh, this here rebel army. They have some Hastati. They have Roman uh, units because they are Roman rebels. Uh, let's see. Let's build some communal farming. We have minus in Arminium. I don't like that. Armin Arminium to me is always like a minus city. It takes a great deal to actually get it in plus territory. Um, so I think we, we will try to make it a great city once. But now, the enemy will be engaged. I will f fight this on the battle map because I do not trust the AI. So let's do this. Only a fool cares for omens and portents. No matter how bad they may be. We make our own destinies and we are not ruled by the flight of some damn bird. Rebellious slaves may think of victory, but we should make them think kindly of their master's whips. They are dead men. They have been brought to the battlefield by mewling infants instead of leaders. I have never yet lost a fight against these men. I have no intention of starting today. So together, we will gain another victory. So, let your battle cry be, victory! Victory and glory to Rome! Heck yes. <clears throat> so one thing he said there was that he had never lost a body to these... Uh, sorry, a, a bottle to... Uh, blah! A battle to these people. Um, and that is so cool because... Uh, the system here actually tracks who you have been fighting. Um, so since we have not fought... Uh, or since we have fought rebels before... 
And uh, since we have not lost a battle to rebels, he says that he, ha he that he has never lost a battle to these people. It's so cool. Now we will move forward. It's just uh, Rome has, uh, if not the, then one of the best soundtracks uh, after Medieval. I can never decide which soundtrack is best, the Medieval 2 soundtrack or the Rome uh, Total, Total War soundtrack, but they are both up there and are simply amazing. So we're going to run a bit. We will try to bait them out with our archers. So now they should have to react. Because I suppose they wouldn't want to stand here all day and get shot at. But they do have heavy, heavy armor units. Um, Hastati. We should maybe instead try to hit the town watch. Uh, or actually, if I'm not... Uh, if I'm not completely mistaken, Town Watch's um, defense modifier is really high. So let's see how much damage we can do on uh, one volley. Okay, we do, we do, um, we did get rid of some. So we can speed this up a bit. <laughs> this is <laughs> quite the show. What is this uh, 18th century fighting? Come on, guys. Okay, their group is damaged. And they are coming for us, it seems. I think I want to put my archers behind uh, here now. Because I don't want them to... Um, interfere with the uh, Hastatis. So let's see how much damage we can do. Are you guys? Oh, I uh, we have to enable um, fire at will. That should be enabled from the start, in my opinion. But okay, let's play this. That is damaging indeed. And they are shaken, they are running, and I think we can uh, safely uh, attack these people. Let me see here now. Their enemy general is here. We want to take him out. Before he can seriously damage our general. They are persistent, but they are also wavering. So let's uh, hit him. Oof. Damn. Okay. That was a heavy uh, loss for that. And there he went. The enemy general is dead. His men know their doom approaches. I think uh, there's no point in uh, toying with them anymore. Broke it. Oh, I just love the collision effects in Rome. Be praised. The enemy's hearts are full of fear, and now they flee. With rebels, um, so normally against a faction, if you don't kill everyone, or at least uh, seriously destroy uh, their army, the army continues to live. But with rebels, I do believe that they just get wiped out. So let's try to end this and see. Victory! 
and yes, the army was stack wiped. That's uh, truly great. Now we will move back and um, move towards Gaul once more. Fleet is attacked by a rebel fleet, and we cannot flee. But we won! <laughs> wow! Okay. I'll take it. Very well fought. Coming of age, Amulius Julius. Great, he is bald at 16 years old. Always a good sign. Lines between Macedon and Thrace. Okay. Another rebel army standing in front of us. We shall engage soon. Let's see here. What can we build? I think we will build a market um, to increase our revenues. And we'll build a trader in the Suggesta. I think we will leave it at there for now. Uh, this was so much fun. It's good to be back with Rome. Uh, it, it's always a pleasure, but it, it has been way too long. So thank you so much for watching. And uh, I hope I'll see you next time as well. Bye-bye.